Hey guys, welcome back to Project Bodybuilding. This was your winner of the 2024 Detroit Pro. Who you're looking at for those that are unfamiliar with this young gun is Martin the Martian Fitzwater. And like I said, he won the Detroit Pro. However, for whatever reason, I'm sure there were plenty, there were only six names in the entire Detroit Pro lineup. Now the show did come down to a competitive top two where Martin ultimately prevailed, but it obviously wasn't the most stacked show. But the thing is, it could have been. The show was in fact after the Arnold Classics, so we could have had a couple of those guys show up. And it was also before New York, so we could have had some guys do a trial around here in Detroit before they head on to New York. But nope, we had one guy from any of the Arnold Classics compete here, that being Good Vito. And really the entire lineup consisted of young guys, new pros, or guys that are just newer in the sport in general. Even Martin hasn't been competing as a pro very long and he won the show. So who could have done this show? Who was in striking distance? Three names come to mind. One was James Hollingshead. He's a friend of Fuad Abiyad who was actually running the Detroit Pro and James did both the Arnold UK and Arnold Ohio getting solid placings too. But he decided not to do this one for a multitude of reasons, citing financial reasons, which doesn't make sense by the way because Fuad said he would cover travel, but then James also cited moving and him setting up and expanding his new gym. Another name that most people expected to do this show was Tony O'Burton. Tony o literally competed one week before Detroit at the Arnold Classic South America, where he arguably beat Rafael Brandau, but he and his coach said they didn't feel that signing up for Detroit was necessary, so they missed the deadline for the contract, meaning Tony o couldn't have competed at the show because he was jumping in at the last minute. And finally, the last name I feel should have done the show was John De La Rosa. He was literally committed to the show, but after the Arnolds, he decided to take a very brief offseason in hopes of adding more size before he picks it back up in the summer, so he pulled out of the show. These are just three guys that could have done the show. It made a lot of sense for them to do it, but they didn't do it for one reason or another. And a lot of that does come down to choice. They basically all made choices to do something else. And maybe those were the right choices, we'll have to wait and see. All these guys do want to get back to the Olympia this year, but they have to win a show, and they all passed an opportunity here. Not a guarantee, but certainly an opportunity. And that's nothing against Martin at all, but just on paper, he's a young guy, and all these guys I've mentioned are good and seasoned bodybuilders. And the prize money at the show was great too. This should have enticed them to go, but they didn't, so I wanted to make a comparison comparison about this. What if all these guys I mentioned did compete here in Detroit? Would Martin still have won? Would another one of these guys be able to breathe a sigh of relief after getting qualified? Let's try and answer those questions in today's video. Here is Martin Fitzwater from the 2024 Detroit Pro versus recent versions of Tony O'Burton, James Hollingshead, and John De La Rosa. Or what I'm calling Martin versus missed opportunities. Question mark. We have a stacked four-way comparison to get into today, so let's cut the intro and jump into the video. If you guys do like these types of videos, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more. Right off the bat, we're starting with a fairly contentious polls. I don't see a clear winner here. I don't think it's because everyone is perfect. I think they're close because they all have flaws, so it's all about what matters to you the most and what you have certain athletes getting away with. Starting with John, I actually think he has the best outline here, but the amount of space John takes up is less than the rest of the guys. He has good lines, but he has a smaller frame, and he is the second smallest guy here. And also his arms, while solid and balanced, lack a good bicep peak. Overall, I really like his shape, but he's missing a little size everywhere. He isn't as imposing as everyone else and lacks a little in the arms. Moving on to James, I'm actually bugged by what he brings the most out of everyone. Now, James is the biggest guy on stage, both in height and in the amount of muscle, but his structure is certainly not the best. His waist is wider and his lats are high, and these things lead to a very mid V taper. Now, the legs are insane, but there is a massive asymmetry between them, something that he has only talked about a little. He says he was injured, but I don't think he specified what kind of injury yet. But anyway, going back upstairs to the other limbs, they also bug me. In terms of structure, I just think they're a little short for his torso, but perhaps more importantly, I don't think they're big enough for his waist. It's like the thickness of his torso makes his arms look even smaller, and they kind of look photoshopped from someone else's physique onto James's. They just don't fit his flow. So James definitely has some structural limitations, but he does have the size advantage on the rest of these guys. Going to Martin, I think he's solid everywhere. He's solid in the overall X-frame category with his very wide lats and his big quads, and his flexed abs are actually a great touch. Now, I do think he could stand to bring the arms up a little bit more. He has from his earlier versions for sure, but they're still weak. But I still think he kind of has the second best arms in this lineup, which kind of says something, but in a different lineup, that would probably not be the case. Other than that, though, he is very solid. Then finally, Tonio is kind of the odd man out, and that's because he's black. No, not actually. It's actually because he's the only one with hair. But no, that's not really the case either, although it is true. It's because of the disparity in size. Tonio quite simply looks like the odd man out because of his level of size. He doesn't look as thick or as stacked as the other guys. But in poses like this, it's okay. His waist is the smallest, and overall he looks pretty streamlined for this pose. And he legitimately does have the best arms here. They may be a bit small, but his peaks are unmatched in this lineup. It was a lower bar, but Tonio passes that pretty easily. So anyway, you can see that everyone has some things. Others may have more or less of those things, though. So it's close 
calls, but I'm ripping the band-aid off and just ranking these guys. I'm going to put James in fourth. He just bugs me from head to toe. Then I'm actually putting Tonio. Yes, even though he has the best arms, this is simply because I was more impressed with the other guys. I think it's that level of size. Next, I have John. John really impresses me. I love his outline. Again, it's the best on stage, but I feel that Martin has the second best X-frame proportions, but beats John and too many body parts for John to win on his better X-frame alone. Martin wins the legs, the lats, and even the arms. Basically, I don't see too many flaws with Martin. He's a good well-rounder. John doesn't have too many flaws either, but Martin is doing more things right, if that makes sense. Overall, I think the top three in this post are pretty close, but that's how I have them. The front lat is a lot like the front double. I am again going to put James in last. It's the structural limitations, his waist to lat ratio just isn't there, not to mention some of the other flaws. His midsection is notoriously washed out, something that will be an ongoing theme, and the legs still have that asymmetry. He looks very thick in the chest and so on, he's very thick overall, but his shape leaves too much to be desired. Then after James, and third I'm putting John. His size just doesn't save him here, because unlike the front double, I don't find his shape to be the best anymore, and you can't be small and not have the shape. Both guys in front of him are wider and are beating him in a lot of body parts. After John at a close second, I have Tonio. Tonio again is the odd man out because of his level of size, but in this pose, again, it's okay, as long as you bring the shape, and that's what Tonio does. And I think his shape in this pose is even better than the front double, because now he's not bottom heavy. When he spreads his wings, he can balance things out between his stellar lower body and the upper body. His taper is also very good up top, and he has a lot of fullness everywhere like in the chest, delts, and arms. His midsection is also stellar. And of course, downstairs, he has some crazy quad sweep with some decent separation. He's very balanced top to bottom, and even though he's giving up a lot of size, I do think his streamlined appearance helps him get over the other two gentlemen, but not the Martian. I think Tonio may have the best shape in this pose, but what sells me on Martin is the difference in size while he manages to bring that good shape as well. Again, this goes back to Martin being a good well-rounder. He has a good X-frame, way better than John and James, and close to Tonio's. But he's beating Tonio in just about every body part and definitely wins in terms of overall size. I have Martin in the legs, the chest, and maybe even the arms and delts too. And yes, the lats as well. Martin's lats are more pronounced and thicker looking. So overall, I really, really like Tonio's shape, and if you have him winning on that, I suppose it's fine. But Martin has a great X-frame and wins basically every other body part. He's complete, balanced, and more developed. So I have him making it two for two here. The side chest is a return to form for everyone. This is a very solid pose for every individual on stage. But remember how I was saying Tonio has a size issue? Well, that's still the case here too. He's solid, don't get me wrong, very round and complete, but all these guys are just so much bigger. Take a look at the lineup as a whole and you can just tell Tonio is missing that level of thickness from all these other guys. So I gotta put him in fourth. For kind of the same reason though, I'm putting John in third. There is definitely a jump in the level of size between Tonio and John. John is a lot more stacked, but compared to James and Martin, not even John has a level of thickness nor roundness. He's pretty thickly developed but it's just on a smaller frame, and he's going to be relegated to third here. Now these next two again have that notable jump in overall thickness. Now you might think I would be going with James on this one because he's the biggest man, and that should translate to winning a pose that requires you to be massive and thick from this angle. Well, I'm not. I'm going with Martin as the winner here yet again. It comes down to more detail and separation. While Martin does win a couple of body parts too. Let's start in the chest. James is huge, but Martin has more detail for sure. James has never had too much separation anywhere, even when he is conditioned. And we can see that Martin's specs are not only more detailed, but I think they actually may be a bit fuller than James's. They're at least very close. You can even make a strong argument for Martin winning the arm and the delt. And I do have Martin winning in the side leg because the bottom half of James's is blurry. Martin has less size than James, but not really by much, and I like his neater separation. And that's kind of the story for the whole pose. I think if these two got together on stage, James would look a bit bigger, and maybe that could allow him to win. He's very imposing in real life. But for now, based on what I'm looking at here, Martin is certainly big enough. He probably wins the chest too and other body parts because he has the better separation. And overall, top to bottom, he has the better separation, not just on a per body part basis. Like I said though, I think James definitely could have won this one on a real stage though. He's definitely closer to Martin than the other two. The rear double has quite the surprise in it, but ultimately I'm going to end up sounding like a broken record here. The first two guys I want to isolate are John and James because I think they're third and fourth, but I'm not sure which is which. John is really wide for his frame for one. He's just as wide if not a bit wider than James because James is structurally narrow and that is translating in his actual back development too. But width is not the main factor here. It's thickness and detail. And even though James is narrow and has his oddly shaped lats, he does have thickness on John. John's upper back just doesn't have those nooks and crannies we look for. And come on, we know how James trains. He trains heavy, row and deadlifting a ton of weight, and that seems to be translating well to his back. John's back kind of looks shallow by comparison. James has John beat thickness and detail clearly, even with the weird lat shape. But John does have the lower body going for him because while he's smaller, he's definitely more detailed. So this is close because you have to consider everything. John has the width and the lower body, but James is just too thick and too detailed for John to win. And by win, I mean third, because although James is thick, so are the next two guys, but they don't have the weird and high lats. Anyway, once again, I see a stark divide between the bottom two guys and the top two, which in this case are Tonio and Martin. But which 
which prevails to be the winner of the pose. Well, this may surprise some of you. All we ever hear about in regards to Tonio is about his back. Everyone wants to say how good it is, and sure, it is. It's certainly an above average back. But to be honest, I don't really see most of the hype. I have Martin winning the back department easily, for example. Martin's back is just so incredibly thick, his traps are bigger, the rest of the upper back region is thicker, and the mid back is denser, and so on. Tonio has the nice V shape to his back, and he has the nice Christmas tree, but when you put him next to Martin, Tonio's back kinda looks a little flat by comparison. And go downstairs too for another big Martin win. Martin is just much bigger and more developed in the hams, his quad sweeps are big, and overall he's shredded. There's no way Tonio's winning here either. The only area I'd give to Tonio in this entire pose are the arms and delts. He has the better separation between those muscle groups and the better peaks on his buys. But you can't win the pose just off the arms and delts, especially when the lower body isn't a contest and when Martin wins the back easily. This surprised me a little too, I have to be honest, but I have Martin clearly winning this pose. And I know I said Martin and Tonio are above the rest of the pack in this pose, but Mar but even Martin is quite ahead of Tonio. The other two guys have some bigger flaws though, and Tonio is solid so he gets a clear runner-up spot, but Martin is pulling away with this one surprisingly easily. In the second back pose, a lot of these guys are getting hung up because of their structures, but I still see the same divide as in the last back pose. Tony and Martin are leading the pack and James and John are falling behind. John obviously isn't super strong here because it's all about width and he's structurally smaller. And James kind of has the same problem though, even though he's much taller because he just doesn't have that shoulder width. But just by nature of being bigger, even James for being narrow for his height is still wider compared to John. So sure, he's probably winning on just that alone. I think that's the right decision, but let the record show I do prefer John. His back is much tighter than James and James is definitely waterlogged in his back and that makes John look like the thicker one and he's definitely more detailed. And I also have John winning the lower body again just for the same reasons as in the rear double. It's not like these two are fighting for first, so to be honest, I don't really care a whole lot about who places higher, but I am placing James a bit higher, simply for width because that is the most important factor. Other than that, I prefer John overall, and personally, I just prefer John, but he's going to take fourth here. Now, the next two guys, as I said, are in a tier above. Antonio and Martin are both bringing great backs, but like the last two gentlemen, I think Tonio is a little held back structurally. Definitely not as much as the other guys, though, but Tonio is still a smaller guy, and that puts him at a disadvantage here. He's pretty wide for his frame, sure, but not as wide as Martin. And what about detail and thickness? For those things, you also have to go with Martin. His spinal erectors and traps are much more more pronounced than Tonio's, even though Tonio has great traps himself. And once again, I'm giving Martin the lower body, he's just much bigger overall and peeled. You can't argue with those things. So overall, I think the last back pose was a little closer than this one, actually. Here, I think Martin clearly wins the important thing, that being width, and he adds thickness in the lower body in there too. Tonio's back is solid, but Martin surprisingly pulled off the upset in both rear poses. Returning to the side means yet another strong pose for both James and Martin, and this also means that Tonio once again is the odd man out. Not only is he the smallest, but with his posing he makes himself look even smaller. Now his tricep is actually very good, I'm not disregarding that, but I have to disregard Tonio as a whole because he sticks out like a sore thumb, with a big lack of size. Now the remaining three guys have the size, but now the devil is in the details. So next up on the chopping block is John. I think his tricep is actually the weakest of the bunch, his horseshoe is just smaller than everyone's including Tonio's, and sure he has a lot of size, he is a shorter guy so it's easy for him to look very thick developed. But both of these other guys still have more size on him. Also, and this is a nitpick, I just wish John's stomach was a bit more locked in. I know it's a small thing, but all these guys are solid, so I have to pick them apart. And those things I mentioned for John to put him in third, it's a solid pose for him, but better for the others. Now between James and Martin, both guys are by far the thickest, like they were in the side chest, and both have solid triceps. James is very big in general, and with his height and just how big he is, you know he would probably appear a little bit bigger on stage if he got next to Martin. But Martin definitely has those details on him. He has more details in the chest, dealt the midsection, and even the side leg. So I think this can go either way, but I'm going to repeat what I said in the side chest. Martin is big enough. I think his tricep is also better because it's a bit more clearly defined, as is the rest of his physique. In person, this definitely could be different, and if you want size above all else, then go with James. But Martin has plenty of size, plus some other things that James doesn't. And I really want to see Martin continue the streak, so it may be a 50-50 thing, but I'm giving this coin flip to Martin. Now we're going to the abs and thighs, and I just gotta get this one out of the way. James is pretty much all but disqualified from this pose. I don't think I really need to go over why, either. Anyway, next I gotta get John out of the way. We definitely have a big step up in quality, and I'm not saying he's bad at all. He's certainly not, but we can see two things quite clearly. His quads are not up to the level of Martin's nor Tonio's, and the same goes for his abs separation. He's good, but getting outclassed here. But not by James, John still gets a very easy third. Now, I see the next two as kind of close. Both Martin and Tonio have great abs and great thighs. I think Martin actually has the better of both, though. Martin has the better quads because Tonio does have plenty of size, but lacks Martin's level of separation, and I would say Martin does beat him on that size as well. Now, on the abs is a little interesting. I do think Martin does win the abs themselves. He has the deeper separation and his abs pop more, but Tonio's waist is very appealing. Not to mention his abs are also extremely good, but I just don't think Tonio's smaller waist is enough to outweigh Martin's better abs and quads, so he'll be taking a close runner up on this one. 
All these guys finish this comparison strongly. These are all great most muscular poses. But this shot is all about looking big and freaky. And once again, John and Tonio are up on the chopping block first. But I do think John does somewhat easily prevail over Tonio. Tonio just gets the shaft in these poses. The lineup really hurt him here because it was very apparent that he's not carrying the same amount of muscle as the other guys. The same thing happens here. He's just exposed. He's again sticking out like a sore thumb. Antonio does pack a lot of roundness. But even against John, who has a smaller frame, there's still a noticeable disparity in size. John just looks thicker. He looks harder as well and has some more muscle maturity. He has that grainier look. But both guys are great. They're showing off phenomenal poses, but John squeaks by. But then again, we have a step up when we move to Martin and James. These guys are by far the biggest and most developed guys on stage from a muscle perspective. Now, James has been hit or miss in these poses, but this is finally a big hit for him. But still, Martin looks great. He's stacking up very well in size and beats James in detail. So it's close on a per body part basis, which I'm not going to do in this pose. Martin probably wins a few more than James. However, look at them side by side and look at how massive James is. He's taller than Martin and we know for a fact that James is beating Martin in scale weight, which doesn't matter too much in the grand scheme of things, but it's visible here. Overall, James has built more muscle, maybe not relatively speaking, but he's obviously very big, and he manages to get close to his trademark grainy look. He may not be super separated, but he just has that slightly grainier quality, a little less so than John. So I do have to end Martin's winning streak. He was so close, but the buck stops here. James is just too massive, and all of his flaws take a back seat. His arms don't look small, his narrow structure isn't a factor, and he gets to show off all those strengths too, like all that muscle, the graininess, the legs, and the density. Martin is absolutely top notch though, he has great detail and great body parts, but next to James, it's clear who's the bigger man. And that may be a simple explanation, but it's a simple pose. This is the most muscular, and for that reason, James is breaking Martin's winning streak, taking the final pose. Well, I was calling this video Martin vs. Missed Opportunities, and I'll still keep it in the title for a good thumbnail, but it turns out that maybe this wasn't a missed opportunity for a lot of these guys. Martin did surprisingly well, really well. Take a look at the scorecard. He won seven poses and by far had the best score. And I know a lot of you are going to be like, there's no way, Martin is a newer guy, he's not beating these guys. Are you sure about that? But guys, Martin is the real deal. I'm telling you, give him the props if you aren't already. I think Martin thrives on a couple of things, his condition, and above everything else, it's the completeness. Every one of these guys had gaps. James managed to pick off a pose, but he was ranking last in a couple of shots, and he had some noticeable gaps in his physique. Antonio is very complete, but his gap is an overall one. He had the conditioning in good shape, but in this lineup that arguably hurt him, because he was giving up size. Like I said time and time again, he was sticking out like a sore thumb. He did well in a couple of poses because of that, but in others, it looked odd. For John, it was kind of the same thing. He was a bit smaller, but that was his only gap. I actually think with his level of size, conditioning, and actual body parts, I think he was the most complete next to Martin. Now Martin, we know, was far ahead of the pack with a score of 9, so he wins. And sure, you can say that out of the seven poses he won, maybe there were a couple that were close and they could have been given to another guy. But if you noticed, the second place finishers in these poses were pretty sporadic. There really wasn't a clear second next to Martin. So sure, if you give the close poses to someone else, yeah, someone else would take that pose, but then very quickly they'd go back to taking third or fourth at another couple of poses. They were all over the place. Martin would still be pretty far ahead of the pack even if you gave those closer poses to someone else. We aren't even really talking about many poses anyways. Maybe the front lap, maybe the side shots. Sure, they were the closer shots, but are they close in general? Anyway, this all goes back to Martin being complete. If Martin wasn't first on the pose, the absolute minimum he would get is second. I didn't see him anywhere close to last in any pose, let alone third. And he's the most solid guy across the board, across all aspects of bodybuilding, judging, and across all poses. Martin has the roundness, a lot of muscle for his frame, really no big weaknesses, the condition, basically everything. Now, who was the best out of the remaining three? These guys were all much closer to each other than they were to Martin, so honestly, this is a tougher question. So let's go ahead and drop Martin out of this comparison for a second and redo the scorecard. It's still super close, all these guys are separated by one point each, but now we get a slightly clearer picture as to who's winning more poses. Dropping Martin out, Tonio actually wins four poses, James wins three, and John wins one. But I'm actually going to override this by just a little, keep in mind it's very close. I actually have James last, not John like the scorecard says. This is because James had some big gaps. John really didn't have any on that level. And keep in mind, John did just beat James twice at both the Arnold Ohio and the Arnold UK. So altogether, that's why I think it's fairly safe to say John would have prevailed if similar versions of these guys guys stepped on stage together. Now between John and Tonio, that's interesting. Both guys are more complete, they had great conditioning, but John had more muscle, and Tonio had better shape. I think in a 1v1, it would actually be very close. I'm not going to go back and really analyze this 1v1. I think either guy could actually win, but I kind of have a hunch on Tonio. But like I said, all three of these guys are close in the grand scheme of things, and it doesn't matter because all of them are losing to Martin. So let's move on to the next question. Who would have had the best chance to beat Martin? I think the answer to that question is very similar to the last one. John doesn't have the flaws of James, he has the completeness of Tonio, he has solid shape, 
shape and great conditioning too. And perhaps most importantly, he is similar to Martin, and even good Vito for that matter, who plays second, so he wouldn't stick out if he did join this lineup. Now, Tonio, on the other hand, would. And that would be for better or for worse, depending on the polls, but for John, he would stack up well and fit in across every pose. But in a straight 1v1 against Martin, I think Tonio would be just as effective as taking Martin on. Now, I say effective, but that still means they're both going to lose. I'm just saying Tonio and John would have the best chance of beating Martin. But given everything like more size and similarity to Martin, overall, I'd give the edge to John for a slightly better chance to take on Martin. Being a longtime veteran of the sport certainly doesn't hurt either. So John is the winner in that regard, but come on, Martin is clearly winning this entire comparison, which I gotta be honest, I really didn't expect. And sure, Martin had that great lighting and the black backdrop on the side, and of course, that helps. But I think Martin would have beaten these guys fair and square. His back and legs are insane, he's complete everywhere else, the conditioning was top-notch, and he has a lot of size. I'd like to see more in the future, but he's in a good spot right now. So maybe these guys were right to skip Detroit. Martin probably could have snuck up on all of them, even though they're more established guys. But like I said, Martin is the real deal. He's just getting started, and my expectations for him this year are incredibly high. Maybe this would have been different on an actual Detroit Pro stage, but as of right now, in a what-if scenario, I have Martin winning against all of these guys and maintaining his Detroit Pro title. Well, that's going to do it for today's video. What did you guys think of this four-way comparison? Do you actually think there were missed opportunities here? Do you think Martin still would have prevailed out of this lineup? And who do you think would have had the best chance against Martin? Leave me your thoughts down in the comments. And if you guys like these types of videos and want to see more, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. By the way, if you guys are looking for any high-quality supplements to help you on your own bodybuilding journey, be sure to check out Arms Race Nutrition. Then at checkout, be sure to use my code, Project10, for 10% off your entire order. That's code Project10 at ArmsRaceNutrition.com. Finally, with all that said, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I will See you all in the next video.